All right, so let's talk about season two of X Men '97. I want to discuss what I think is going to happen in this season based on the finale of X Men '97 season one. If you have not seen the entire season one of X Men '97, go watch it. Come back to this video because I'm going to go into spoilers for the finale right now. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Go watch it. Come back now. Finale, okay, Bastion exploded and Magneto woke up and put the force field around Asteroid M to stop it from hitting the Earth. Uh, and then what happened was there was some kind of time displacement. They disappear. Some of the X-Men wound up in the past and they met up with N. Sabanur, who is the young apocalypse. And in the future, uh, Cyclops and Jean wound up with Ascani and Cable. Now, um... That and then of course we have of course Storm and Wolverine and a few others that we don't know where they're at. So that's the, the third mystery. So going into season two, there's gonna be a lot of anticipation about what is going on, what the mystery is. So clearly it seems to me like at least at the very least for the first half of the season, if not the entire season, is gonna be focused on Apocalypse. It seems like he is the focused villain or, or character antagonist of the x-men in season two now i will say that i think what they're going to do is i think they are going to basically do a version of the age of apocalypse it's not going to be the same thing as the event that happened back in the 90s where everything switched over i don't think it's going to be a situation quite like that however Based on what Ascani said in the future, a.k.a. Hope Summers, it does seem like there is a version of the Age of Apocalypse going on in the future. Now, again, I want to reiterate, I would not expect it to be the same as the comic book version. It's kind of like how they took elements of Inferno, E for Extinction, and even in the old X-Men cartoon, they had a two-part Days of Futures Past episode that was not, even though it was similar story beats, it was not the same as the comic book version of Days of Futures Past. So, um, I think here they're going to be borrowing ideas but not really going all the way with it. I think that Cyclops and Jean will discover that this post-apocalyptic future, no pun intended, that we saw. We saw this in the original X-Men cartoon when mutants are being hunted down. Well, here's the thing. I think with the defeat of Bastion, there's a possibility that that future has been changed and that now the problem is, well, with Bastion being defeated... And the Sentinels being put out of commission, hopefully once and for all, now the problem lies in Apocalypse. And I think there might be a new future now where even though Cable and everything that had already happened still stayed the same, he did not die. He stayed a survivor with Ascani, a.k.a. Hope Summers. Now we've got a situation where Apocalypse is the one that's in control of the future. And I think it's going to be a situation, a story where... In the past, N. Sabanur is probably going to make friends with the X-Men. And it could be a situation where... And Rob from Comics Explained says something similar to this. Where they overthrow the Pharaoh. And, and when the X-Men figure out how to get back to their timeline, that's going to lead to N. Sabanur taking the technology and becoming Apocalypse. Now, there is a chance that the Pharaoh is actually Pharaoh Ramatut, a.k.a. one of the variants of Kang the Conqueror. The same one that you saw in the mid credit scene of Ant-Man, except it probably, well, no, it won't be played by Jonathan Majors. It'll be a different kind of variant because, presumably, the X-Men 97 universe, if it's canon to the Marvel shows, which I don't really care, or to, to the MCU, I mean, I don't really care... If it is, to be honest, part of me prefers that it not be canon. And I don't think it really is because it, it's not canon to like the 616 MCU universe, but like an alternate variant universe, you know, the multiverse. You could always say that. I just don't know if I want that to be part of the crossover, but we'll see. Kevin Feige said that he is going to consider making it one of the universes in the MCU. But really anything can be one of the universes in the MCU. I just don't want them to mess up X-Men. Now, but what I am worried about is, and not so much worried, but more so like cautious about, is if they make Kang the Conqueror a character in X-Men 97. Now, Kang the Conqueror 
has, in the past, been an enemy of the Fantastic Four and the Avengers, not the X-Men, even though they have crossed paths a few times. He's mostly known as a arch-nemesis of the Avengers and Fantastic Four. Obviously, Nathaniel Richards, uh, he thinks he's of the bloodline of Reed Richards and possibly Doctor Doom. So there's a whole lot there. But nevertheless, I feel like having Kang the Conqueror here... I'm not sure how I feel about that, even though Pharaoh Rama Tut um, would make sense at least with the story of Apocalypse in the comics, because there was a retcon where Rama Tut, where Apocalypse kind of became Rama Tut's like um, surrogate, sort of like his, um, you know, his Padawan, for lack of a better term. But it, it might be that, it might not be. But I think that Apocalypse in the past and Sabanur in Egypt, I think that he will be an ally of those X-Men, but they're going to inadvertently give him power, and so they they end up being the ones that create their own enemy. They end up being the one that creates Apocalypse. Now, you saw in at the, in the mid credit scene where Apocalypse went to Genosha and found Gambit's card and said, you know, death, and mentioned the word death. Gambit's going to become one of the four horsemen, which is death. So, I'm not sure if it'll just be Gambit, or if it'll be Gambit and Wolverine, but Apocalypse will have four new, um, four new members of of his new a new four horsemen. Now, as a result of that, I think we're gonna see Archangel come back because Archangel was the first to be converted, the first of the X Men to be converted into being one of Apocalypse's um, horsemen. So I think we're going to see him come back and join up with the X-Men to help fight Apocalypse because he's always tied in with Apocalypse and the X-Men. So I hope we see that because one of the things the season was missing was Colossus and Archangel, man. Those are some, those are classic X-Men. You know what I mean? Classic, classic X-Men. So they got, they got to be in this season. They got to be. In the future, though, I think Cyclops and Jean are going to figure out what's going on. And I think their story is going to be mostly focused on Oh, oh my God, we're stuck here and there's a problem. Meanwhile, while all this is going on, Bishop and Forge are going to be going through the time stream trying to find the X-Men. Eventually, I'm sure Forge will figure out a way to help Bishop go to the past, retrieve the X-Men, go to the future, retrieve those X-Men, and then it becomes a situation where they have to work together to stop Apocalypse, but the problem is that Apocalypse is going to have Gambit on his side, and that's going to freak out the X-Men, especially Rogue, because of how she felt about Gambit. She was close to him. So, I do feel like that's the direction they're going in. I think that may be a situation where we see Apocalypse as the villain for the first half of the season and then possibly Onslaught for the second half. I do think that when Xavier went into Magneto's mind, when Magneto, it was different in the comics, but when Magneto woke up and like put that force field around Asteroid M, I still think that the seed of Onslaught was still in, put inside of Xavier. It wasn't acknowledged, it wasn't teased necessarily, but I think they're gonna go back to that moment when they decide to do Onslaught, and then we're gonna get that. Now that may be season three. That may be season three, it might not be season two. So that's why I'm saying there's a possibility that Apocalypse is gonna be the villain for the first half of the season, the first five episodes, and then the last five is Onslaught. But if it were me, I would try to figure out a way to have Apocalypse be the villain of the entire season, and then, and maybe not the only villain. You can have other characters appear, other things for them to overcome. There's a big rogues gallery with the X-Men. And of course, we have to figure out if Bastion actually is dead, because it seems like he was dead. Maybe he got sent through time also. Remember, the reason why he got sent through time is because he absorbed Cable's arm, and that's how Cable time travels. So I assume that when he died, that that messed up all the time stuff so that's got to be a storyline they go to and uh and i think the whole season of apocalypse being the villain is great and then onslaught can be the villain of season three and then hopefully marvel will allow them to use the avengers we've already seen a couple in in season one the avengers and the fantastic four to help defeat onslaught that's what i want to see I actually would like to see that in the actual MCU itself, but honestly, man, I'm so in love with X-Men 97 that right now, because of how much, how bad and weak the MCU's been for Phase 4 and 5, I do literally feel like 
I would rather see it in X Men '97 because those writers, Bo DeMeo is not there anymore, but the writers of this show get it a lot more than the MCU does, and it seems to be a lot simpler because. It's just the X-Men, but we do have some guest stars. And I, I'm excited, man, because the Marvel Universe is big, and I want to see it. I want to see these characters that were previously just in movies in more of them in X-Men 97. I would love to see Thor, like the classic-looking Thor. Not so much the one, you know, the, the, the movie one, but like the classic Thor from the 90s and the 80s. I would love to see him in X-Men 97 because it just looks better. Anyways, y'all, that's going to do it for me. What'd you think? Let me know in the comments with your theories about season two, and I'll talk to you soon.